Well, Larry Sparks here with Destiny Image, and I am so excited about our guest today because we are in a season right now where I believe the Holy Spirit has spoken to me, and he said, it is time to contend for Christmas miracles. And, you know, we talk about Christmas, and we say the magic of Christmas. That's a bunch of baloney. There's no magic. It's a time of miracle, time of the ultimate miracle, the incarnation of Jesus. But I am convinced that there are people who carry a great anointing because of what their eyes have seen with prayer that are going to infuse you. As you're watching right now, I believe you're going to get an infusion and an impartation of faith to contend and believe for miracles in your life. I have a brand new book here, Pray Until, from somebody that you are most likely familiar with, Judy Jacobs. Now, you may remember her from such times as singing Days of Elijah, on TBN, but also I know many of her, I mean, you've seen her at Benny Hinn's conferences and crusades leading the mass choir there. But what I know about Judy is this, I love those things. That's actually how I first got introduced to her. And you know what, I'm gonna just unmute her because I, I, I just wanna I just wanna share some of these little, uh, these little moments here. So Miss Judy, if you could just push the unmute button, that would be great. There you are, you are live with me. and. You know, I know you from those wonderful things that God has had you do, but I love this season of your life where you, your husband, and your daughters are going after the presence of God at Dwelling Place Church. Tell people about what does the Holy Spirit have you guys doing in this season of pastoring and leading this church? Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much, uh, Larry. It's an honor to be with you and your wonderful, wonderful uh, audience today. And, um, you know, God is up to something big. He is always up to something big. And I heard the Lord say the other day, anything can happen before December 31st. Anything can happen before December 31st. And, you know, and this is, I love your intro because this is not a magical season. Please give me a break. This is a prophetic season. This is what God is saying to the body of Christ. Can you believe me for anything in this miraculous season that we're in? And, and that's where we're at right now. We're asking God for the unbelievable, the unthinkable, and the undeniable for God to do something great in our midst that we've never seen. I believe that God wants to do something that we have not seen in the past 2000 years. <laughs> and he wants to use this generation to bring it forth. It's going to happen uh, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and seek my face and pray and turn from their wicked ways. Then what I hear from heaven, Jesus says, and the Bible declares. So I'm so excited about what God is doing at Dwelling Place uh, and uh, with, with our lives and our girls and, um, and, and the, the, the powerful. I feel like that, you know, we've heard this term over and over, but I really, really feel like we're in a Kairos moment yeah. where yeah. it is a God moment. It is a moment of a supernatural moment mm. when I believe that anything can happen. I really believe anything can happen uh, in this season. Well, you know, as you're saying that, and I, we'll, we'll be talking about your book, but more than anything with these broadcasts, we just say, welcome, Holy Spirit. Please. Speak and say what you want to say to the people, because as you're saying that, I think of the two kinds of time. You've got Kronos. And then That's you've right. got a Kairos moment. Right. And as you're talking about that, I actually believe what you're equipping people for in this book, and we'll get a little bit of, to, into the story behind this. I really sense we are at that, that special Kairos moment, but I think there's another word for that. And we see it in Acts chapter two, verse one, where it says the people were doing what they needed to do. And yeah. you're, you are, what I love about you, Miss Judy, you're classical Pentecostal. So <laughs> you, you can get fired up about this because they knew what they did. They knew, they, they did what they knew to do. They gathered together one place, one accord. They were praying. Then it says, and suddenly. Suddenly. And suddenly. Oh, don't I you love... sense in your spirit th that we're moving towards another suddenly of God like that? Yeah, yeah. And, and I love reading Mark's gospel because Mark loves that word. And suddenly, and all of a sudden, and immediately. 
And I really believe, but this is a Kairos moment. It is a God moment. It is a moment in time. It is a moment when God is saying something and God is wanting. You know, the thing that we have to understand is God always wants to do this for us. Mm. Whatever we are asking him for, whatever we're believing him for, he is a good father. And it doesn't matter what your background background is of, of a father. He is your heavenly father. And if your earthly father know how to give you good things, how much more? Listen, we just got our Christmas list from our two girls. Oh. <laughs> and knowing their daddy, <laughs> they'll probably get oh, yeah. everything on the list. But how much more? It is the how much more moments mm. that we're in right now. And, he, and he's... He's saying in Jeremiah 33, 3, if you're calling to me, if you'll come boldly, you know, that word call is the same word come in, in the, in the, uh, in the Greek or in the, in the Hebrew, it's call in the, in the Greek, it's coming to me with boldness, with audaciousness mm. and coming to my throne room with, with, and, and know that you're going to find grace to help in time of need. And I think it's, it's a matter of us coming boldly, understanding who our daddy is, understanding who our father is. Call unto me, and then I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you great, watch this, and mighty things. And here's the best part that you don't even know of. Mm. I can show you my prayer list, brother. I can show you. <laughs> it's, I mean, it can come out. But he says, not only am I going to do that, I'm, and, and I'm not one of those, you know, claim it and, and, you know, name it and claim it and grab it and blab it and all that stuff. <laughs> but again, yeah. if it's in the word, I believe it. Come on. So call it's me that true. classical Pentecostal because I believe it from, from Genesis to Revelation. But if you'll just call, I'm going to answer you. I'm going to answer you. And you have to know his timing is not our timing and our time is not his. Somebody said he may not come when we want him, but he's always right on time. That's what yeah. I have found out with this book. And hey, Larry, have you seen the big, large edition? Oh, the large print. Oh, that's great. Oh, that's that's yes. wonderful for Bible studies. For I like it. Thing. I just love this thing. And I think it's been with the whole age thing going on. Uh, <laughs> we're going to be studying this thing together, uh, our friends. And we're going to, I'm going to be on Facebook and I'm going to be wherever. And we're going to be opening this thing up and seeing what is God saying? Because God has a lot to say right now. Right now, he's waiting on us to call and come boldly with audaciousness. We don't have to come in, you know, with our head bow and our, you know, like, you know, no, we come knowing that he's ready. He is ready. He's willing and he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask, think, dream or imagine. How do you know that? Because I've experienced it and I know that you've experienced it. And listen, he is a God that wants to do the supernatural. He is. I, I, I want to ask you the story behind this book, which I'm acquainted with. And I actually believe this is going to release faith to some of the people who are watching and listening, who are specifically praying and believing for a child, for God to break through in mm -hmm. their lives. Because I know our mutual friend, Karen Wheaton, you yeah. so infused her with faith while she was praying for her daughter who went away from the Lord. And what did we see? She came back. But oh something unique happened to your daughter. That is something that a lot of people, particularly around the Christmas period, but a lot of people are dealing with. So what, what happened? What's the story behind you becoming that audacious contender in prayer that you saw with your daughter? Yeah, well, you know, I, I did contend with Karen and God gave her a supernatural miracle. Oh, my goodness. That that miracle was amazing. Those books are unbelievable. But Jamie and I found ourselves with this baby of eight years old with a crippling fear, Larry. It was a fear, uh, a craven fear. It was beyond um, anything that we had ever come in contact with. And it was something that we knew nothing had ever happened to Kaylee. Kaylee had never been abused, had never suffered in any way. We knew it was an attack on, on her mind and, of course, on her purpose because your children are for signs and wonders. And isn't it amazing? He's always after our first seeds. She was our mm -hmm. first fruit. He's always after. And you keep in mind, 
he is always after that first fruit. He's always after that first that first thing that comes out. Of course, he's always after us girls, all right? Because, you know, he knew that it was going to be a woman that was going to bring what was going to happen into the earth. And that was Jesus. Amen. So we just began to see all these changes. She wouldn't eat. She couldn't sleep unless she was sleeping in my arms. Um, she was losing weight. She didn't want to go to school. And so, so many things that were happening that I really will, will keep that between me and, and our family because of the, uh, just the, the, the dreadfulness of how, oh, yeah. how the devil is and what he yeah. does to your mind. And it's not just for children. The devil, be sober, be vigilant. Your adversary, the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And so we saw this and, you know, it got to the point where we, nobody could leave her. We couldn't leave her. She always wanted to cling to us. We knew immediately this was a spirit of fear. And uh, it was a spirit that had attacked her life, had attacked her mind. I mean, she would be looking at something uh, on the on the, on a restaurant, uh, a table, and she'd say, Mom, I just swallowed that. And I'd say, Kaylee, you, you, didn't, you didn't swallow that. It's, it's right here, sweetheart. No, Mom, you don't understand. It's stuck right here in my throat. It was, it was yeah. simply amazing what we had. So uh, we, we, we struggled with that. Uh, day in and day out and week in and week out. And we've been praying and I've been praying and I had my family praying. I'm the baby of 12 and you should meet my other older siblings, uh, Larry, if you think I'm Come so on. My older siblings <laughs> and raising a culture of prayer. And we had everybody praying. Karen was praying with us. So many people were praying one morning upstairs in my bedroom. I was upstairs and I heard the Lord say, I want you to go into a time of fasting and prayer. And I've been praying and I've been fasting. I said, okay, Lord, how long do you want me to do this? He says, I want you to pray and fast until. And I said, until what? He says, until you see a breakthrough and until faith becomes sight. Mm. And so I said, okay, Lord. And, you know, it was, of course. Of course, it was right in the middle of, of our schedule that was unbelievable, unbelievable schedule where we're crisscrossing the, the, the nation and the nations. And uh, here I was and, and I walked downstairs and I looked at Jamie and I said, I'm going on a fast. And he says, OK, I'll, I'll go on a fast with you. He says, I said, he says, how long we're going to fast? I said, um, I've got a word from God. It doesn't have to be you, but this is my word. I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray until, and he's like, until, until what Judy, you got to give me a, give me a little calendar. I'm saying, I'm, I'm, I just know I'm going to pray. I'm going to a place. I am going to the enemy's camp. I am going to a place in faith where the devil has no power. And this is what I, I learned through this, Larry, is that what will the devil will do with until? What is he going to mm. do until? He's going to fight you. Now, I'm going to go on a fast for, or for a week. And for a week, you're going to fight hell. You're going to fight hell before, and you're going to fight. But, you know, what is he going to do with the word? Did you know that you can outlast the devil? Brother, you can outlast him. You can outlast him in your prayer. You can outlast him with your faith. You can outlast him in fasting. You can outlast him with your worship. You can outlast him with communion, saying, Lord, I'm taking this communion every day. I'm taking, because the Bible says as often as you do it. And so we begin to go on a fast. And I'm telling you, in the very first week, it was zip. Nothing was happening. Nothing was changing. We, it would, we would drop her off at school and, and, and 15, 20 minutes later, you've got to come and get Kaylee. She can't stay. She's crying. We, we can't do anything with her. And then our, we were beyond, but we kept pressing. See, this is a time when you have to draw a line in faith and say, as James says, I'm going to hold fast to my confession of faith without wavering. And here's the reason why. For he is faithful that promised. I had a word from God and I knew that God was faithful to do what God said he would do. So I kept hammering. I had all of my friends. 
I had all of my family. We were all praying. We were all fasting. I went to this big convention where there was 80,000 women and I'm going to open up the convention. I haven't eaten in over a week and a half. And my husband says, you're going to at least eat some crackers. I said, I may eat a cracker, but that's about all I'm going to do. Just, and I'm up there and I'm singing, I'm declaring, I'm decreeing there's no God like Jehovah. I'm decreeing all of these things. Inside of me, my heart is bursting. Inside of me, I'm saying, Lord, where are you? But faith cannot be touched. You have to come to a place where you say, I am not moved by what I see. Because the things that are seen, here's the word, is temporary. That word temporary means it's subject to change. It is subject to change. And that's what you've got to get a hold of today. Whatever your situation looks like. It is subject to change. Matter of fact, it's going to change. You got to say in faith, it because the, the, the faith is the substance of things that are hoped for, and it is the evidence. What is the word evidence? It is the convincing proof of things that are not seen. So we started talking into Kaylee. We started speaking into her. I started looking her in the eye and saying, Kaylee, we're going to quote scriptures. We're, God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. Because we know this, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible, which means that God wants us to come alongside of him and believe with him because nothing happens in heaven until something happens on earth. And so we started contending. And I remember one day after weeks being up in my, in my bedroom, just contending. And I heard the Lord say, can you praise me before you see it for Kaylee's deliverance? And I'm like, Lord, you know, I can't even hardly get up off the floor. I, I, you know, if you've ever done a total fast, where it's just water, oh. you, you, you can't even hardly move to have the strength to hardly move. And after weeks, I'm up there in my bedroom and God says, can you praise me right now as though it has already happened? And so I just said, Lord, I can, I can do it in faith, but you're going to have to give me strength. I remember getting up. I remember getting up off the floor, lying prostrate on the floor. I got up on my knees and I began to worship. And I just begin to give him praise and give him glory. And then I thought, well, this sounds pretty good, feels pretty good, but my knees are getting, they're starting to hurt. So I thought, I'll just get up. So I just got up. And when I get up and I'm praying, I have to move. So I just started walking and talking and praising and worshiping. And then all of a sudden, God says, just lift your hands. I lifted my hands and I just found myself all over upstairs, just giving him praise, giving him praise, giving him praise. And do you know, when that little girl came home from school that day, I said to her, as I've said a million times, it felt like, Kaylee, how was your day? How did, how did you do today? What did God do? She said, mom, I had a fantastic day. Oh, mm-hmm. hallelujah. Something broke. Yeah. That's all I needed was one little, so you keep hitting that wall and you never know when the next hallelujah, you never know when the next glory, you never know when the next communion that you take is going to break that wall. I said, I am not moving from my post. I am not moving from this wall. I'm going to see a breakthrough. And this is what God told me. He says, With the children of Israel, God always told the children of Israel, when you go in to take the the land, when you go in and possess the land, there was never an if with God. There was always a when. And I'm here to tell your listeners today, there is never an if, there is a when. There is a when in your testimony. There is a W-H-E-N and there is a W-I-N. And I can testify today, Kaylee is delivered. She's our worship leader. She travels all over the nation and the world. She is powerful. She is mighty. She is declaring to all of hell what God did in her life. And captives are being set free from the young to the old. Because somebody said, I'm not stopping. I'm going to stand on my watch. I'm just going to believe God. Because 
God can and God will. Well, in just a minute, I, I want to pray for the folks who are watching, but I do want to let people know, again, your daughter, not only is she an amazing worship leader, but she really carries what I'd call a breaker anointing. Yes, when she, does. she worships, things break off people. Isn't that interesting that the devil tried to shut her up, shut her down, because sometimes he is more aware of the assignment on our lives than even we are. And I just want to let the listeners and the viewers know, I believe as me and Miss Judy have been talking, an impartation is being released. Yes. You are being strengthened to pray until, because it's not even just about our miracle anymore. It's not even just about your healing. It's not just about your relationship being restored. God's a good father. He wants to heal you. He wants to heal your marriage. He wants to heal your body. But Miss Judy, when I see your daughter, I see two things. And I feel the Holy Ghost on this. Oh, I geez. see a daughter who came oh. home to the Lord. And that makes a mama happy. That's right. I see a breaker. I see a breaker who's been released and turned loose. And the Lord says to somebody watching right now, your miracle is not only meant to just enhance your comfort. Your miracles actually meant to liberate and set free a whole bunch of other people. That's and right. this book, Miss Judy, is a handbook on what to do yep. when you are in that place between receiving a promise from God and seeing it manifest. Because a lot of people wonder, what do I do? How do I act? How do I pray? And you just rattled off five things. I mean, in terms of praise, prayer, fasting, communion, like just four things. But in this book is from somebody with experience, that is you, sharing this is what we did while we didn't see anything. Right. Everything looked the same. In fact, I'm sure there are days where it felt like things got worse. But yeah. you kept praying and contending. And now in this book, Front and Center is a testimony, and I believe the Lord's going to multiply that through this book in Jesus' name. So, Amen. What, Amen. What, what, <laughs> I just feel faith rising, Larry. I feel Come faith on. rising in people right now because the enemy wants you to give up. The enemy wants you to throw in the towel. The enemy wants you to say, well, that's just the way it is. Well, you know, that's the way their father, the grandfather, that this is a generational thing. And I guess they'll just know, no, the devil is a liar. You have power. God has given you a power, authority over all the power of the enemy. And so we have that power to step into that realm of faith by faith and take it and take it, take it, take it and believe that God is going to do it. She is a living testimony. She said, she said, you know, in, in the last chapter, she said, I have found that I didn't just praise my way out pray my way out i praised my way out and she just realized one day that she had just praised her way out of it and so wow. that's what you've got to do you've got to contend and stay don't jump off the train don't jump off when you're in a tunnel don't jump off the train don't jump off the train stay in god stay in faith and faith is rising up you're feeling that faith rise up i feel it yeah you need it there's a desperate situation you're facing and you need this word. You need to go further. That child, that marriage, that husband, that body, everything, it belongs to God. And the enemy is a lie. He is a liar and he's a father of lies. We will not give in to the lies. We know in whom we have believed and we are fully persuaded that he is able to keep that which we have committed unto him. Miss Judy, can you could you just pray as we close out? Could you pray for the folks who are watching? Because I do believe the Lord wants to release an impartation of faith, of grit. Because let me say this one thing, because I love Pentecostals. I love Pentecostalism. And because they knew something about praying until they used language like grab, grabbing the horns of the altar, praying through. So... I just want you to, re I believe the Lord's going to release something through you and through this book. Would you mind praying for the folks who are watching? Father, I just thank you because this is the promise. Your word says, this is the confidence that we have in you, knowing that if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. And if we know that you hear us, then we have those petitions that we desire. So Lord, 
I come into divine agreement and a divine, divine alignment with every person, everybody under the sound of our voice today to say in Jesus' name, this thing must stop. It must cease and desist. I thank you today that it is changing. I thank you today that something is shifting, that something is moving. I thank you today that there's no more holdups. There's no more delays. There's no more setbacks. I thank you, Lord, that we're believing you to come through now in Jesus' mighty name. This is a season of miracles. This is a season where anything can happen. <laughs> anything thing can happen. And I come into agreement. You said, if any two of you shall agree on earth as touching any one yes. thing, it shall be done of them of my father. So I come into divine alignment and agreement with my brother and my sisters today who are watching that says, I will stand. I, and heaven done all to stand, I will still stand. And I believe before December 31st, we're going to see a miracle. I believe before December 31st, we're going to pray. We're going to believe. We're going to hold fast to our confession of faith. And we're going to hear and see the testimonies. And Lord, we thank you in advance for it. You said, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. With thanksgiving. And then the God of peace, which passeth all understanding, shall guard our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. So I speak peace to that situation. I speak peace to my sisters and brothers who are going through situations right now, that the peace of God would hover over them right now. And they that a calm assurance that all is well and all shall be well, that all is well and all shall be well. Oh, hallelujah. All is well and all shall be well. And we expect Expect the great, the mighty, the unbelievable, the unthinkable, and the undeniable. And we believe in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And I want to encourage folks, please share your testimonies because I'm believing, I'm convinced, Miss Judy, as we're talking, as you're praying, oh, as you're even God. sharing the testimony of oh. your daughter, I actually believe God was releasing faith, He was releasing miracles. He was setting yes. people free. That's just what he does. And my, our encouragement is for you to begin to expect and anticipate that. So share those testimonies. Uh, well, Larry, where do I share them? Go to Judy Jacobs' Facebook. Go yeah. to Destiny. Honestly, none of us are trying to take credit for this. Find somewhere to share that testimony because the testimony of Jesus is the oh. spirit of prophecy. And we're going to see multiplied miracles, Miss Judy, as we saw. Through your daughter, it is not just about her. It's not just about Miss Karen's daughter. I just think of those two. And there's multiplied miracles coming behind them because of what God broke through with them. So, so grateful for you standing for those. He has no respect for persons. He has. I'd like to think, uh, Larry, that I'm his favorite, but he has no favorites. Uh -huh. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Yes. We believe it. We believe it. Well, thank you all for watching. Again, share those testimonies, share those stories. And we are believing that by the end of December, I'm Amen. standing with you on that, Miss Judy. Amen. I felt the Holy Ghost say the Jesus. same thing. We're going to go after it. Yes. So, Stay in it. Confess it with your mouth. Yes. Amen. Amen. Faith. This Amen. is the overcome of the world, even our faith. Even our faith. Well, again, thank you all for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you again real soon. Pray Until is available now. Miss Judy Jacobs, thank you so much for joining me today. Praise God. Thank you, Larry.